الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Some phrases that I hear a lot Believe in yourself You can do whatever you put your mind to You just need to have faith in yourself You know positive thoughts Putting out positive energy will get you Positive results And these things that people Hold on to And we hear that run around The world these days Some of them you know, maybe you can take it and maybe you can say, okay, this is, you know, this is something that is a, a good principle. And some of these things that disguise themselves as self-help or as positive thinking, what are they really? A lot of times these things that people say, believe in yourself, you know, put out good vibes, you know, and the universe will give you what you want. This is shirk. Why? But the waqqa ala Allah. And Allah, and Allah, Allah and His Messenger have given us this guidance that we need. And the, the, the way that we go about in our life as Muslim is different than the way that the kuffar run about believing in all kinds of superstition and um, thinking that things happen for reasons other than what Allah has given them guidance in. And for someone to think that someone other than Allah is what gives them their provide and uh, their provision their risk their sustenance and their life this this is a form of shirk so someone who thinks that they're going to read some of these self-help books and some of these self-help books that come out there they guise themselves as positive thinking, you get positive results, you know, the universe vibrates with you and you do it, you have good thoughts and they come towards you and this stuff. And then you should um, hope from the universe good. What is this hope from the universe thing? This is shirk billah. And uh, some of these things, I've even seen them within the, the Muslim community in Egypt. I was I was surprised to see um, someone was showing me. They're like, "What are these books? Like, they don't know they don't know uh, English very well." But and they're like, I, "I saw these books, like The Secret." I was like, "What?" I'm like, "Why is a Muslim sharing a book, The Secret? This is a serious um, book. Like, if you look at what is what is the whole point of the purpose of this book, The Secret, and what it's talking about, like putting out good vibes into the universe and the law of attraction. This law of attraction is shirk." Like this law or whatever you want to call it, this is something that goes against the essence of Islam. The Prophet Wasallam, he addresses this issue very clearly. And he says, when he's talking to uh, Ibn Abbas, he says to him, after giving him advice about protecting him, um, protecting his relationship with Allah, and he gives him this, this amazing advice. And he says, uh, he says that learn or know that if all like if the people all together they came together to give you blessing and to help you and all of this stuff none of them would give you any blessing except what Allah wrote for you and then the same time and then he also says and then he says that if all of them came together to harm you, they wouldn't be able to harm you. If all of the world came together to harm you, none of it would be able to harm you except with what Allah has written and decreed against you. Rufiatil Aqlan. And that the, the pens have been lifted, like the pens of that Allah uh, wrote all of the things, like the pens of decree. Uh, they've been lifted. It's already a done deal. And that the, the, the scrolls have been, uh, like the ink has dried. And this is something, of course, like we need to understand this, this principle that there is nothing out there that will benefit us except that what Allah has given for us. 
and what Allah has prescribed for us. And in another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he talks about that. There's not a single soul that will die until he has gotten all of the risk that is prescribed for him. And so just think about this. All of this risk that is prescribed for this soul, this soul will not die until every single bit of it has come to him. And so this is very important that we understand this. And when when a lot of the, the books that are self-help, they come in this self-help guide. And some of the words that they use is like new thought movement. And this is a, a very tricky movement that they try to feel like they're not, they're not trying to ascribe to a religion. But where does it come from? If you look at the like the founders of this new thought uh, religion, they come from, uh, of course, like from a kind of a mystical Christian background, kind of. But then, if you look at where does this mystic uh, mysticism come from? It comes from like the the Hindu, the Hindu philosophy. And where does this Hindu philosophy come from? It comes from pantheism, shirk. You know, shirk uh, billah. And what are they looking to get their risk from? Are they looking to get their risk from Allah, or are they looking to get their risk from the universe? And so this is very important that somebody understands this. This is something that will destroy someone's iman. If they get in, involved in these books and they try to do this, look, if you read the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah will give you every single thing that you need to learn and everything that you need to know. It is found in the Quran and the Sunnah. If you want to know how to get your risk, Allah will um, tell you. You want to know how to have a long life? Then be good to your parents. Be good to the, the Silat al -Rahm. Like this is a way to give you a longer life. And look to Allah for your risk. And understand and tr trust in Allah for all of these things. And Allah will give them to you. And so this type of um, positive thinking, sometimes it comes in in a very, very, very dangerous way that can destroy the iman of the Muslim, uh, the Muslim that tries to think, oh, maybe this is just positive thinking and whatnot. Now, to, to be fair and to be honest, there are many books that are um, like self-help books that don't fall into this nonsense, this, uh, this nonsense of law of attraction and blah, blah, blah. Some of it is just from trial and error that someone tried and they found this works and someone tried and they found this works and they're not putting their trust in this thing, but rather they see this is a tool that I see it worked, such as like Atomic Habits, some of these books such as like Atomic Habits or the seven, um, the seven uh, habits of a, a highly effective people. Like if you look at some of these things, these aren't things that go against the essence of Tawheed. It's more like these are things that over trial and error and like discovery that I found these are basic principles that help people out with their life. And when they use these, then they will find that they're more productive in their life. Okay, great. You know, like, this is something. And in, in, in general, the, the basis of where we get information about things is there's four main, four main areas that we'd give our, and get our information from things. One, it's from like just seeing in like the trial and error, which is like going back and forth. Of course, and this is like with day-to-day -day actions. How do we know that, um, how do we know like the sun's gonna come out? It happens all the day. Every single day the sun comes out, you know, so, or it's covered up by the clouds sometimes. But like we know the sun comes out because it happened before and it keeps returning. So we know this. And of course, we have also, when it comes to things of the unseen, which the future is a type of unseen, like the what's going to happen in the future. But if we see things that are constantly repeated with like with the scientific method or with going uh, about this trial and error and it's the repetition, we can we can expect that something is going to happen like this. And also we have the other thing, the other way that we get information. So the first is like by actual like observation. And also another one is by revelation, revelation from the Quran, the Sunnah. And so when we have this divine revelation about the Quran, the Sunnah, where do we get our risk from? How do we do this? How do we act? How should we ask? What should we believe? And all of these things, they come from the Quran, the Sunnah. Of course, this is a, a, a type of information that we get that is, uh, of course, infallible. Uh, like if it's an authentic Sunnah, and of course, the Quran is infallible. And, and then also we have another uh, place that we get information from. And this is from like the, the fitra, like the natural inclination of mankind. This is also another place we can get information from. And we can also get information from um, like that Allah would give us some type of information, which is called ilham, which is kind of inspiration. And of course, this is limited in, in when it comes to like average people. And of course, it's like for animals and whatnot, this is something that's much higher. But um, and, and of course, we don't use this to to make anything in the religion or to affirm anything in the religion. But this is something that can be a help and a guide in some, in some senses. So like if we have, uh, say we make istikhara about a certain decision and then Allah gives us a dream after that and gives us peace and we feel like this peace in this decision. Or sometimes there's people that will have a, they'll have just a really sick 
feeling about doing something and they don't do it and then they see something bad happened afterwards like some people had this with like planes they see the plane crashed afterwards and so like this is the sense that yes Allah can give us this information but this is something you know like this is individual and it's not something that you take it out to the rest of the world um, and it's a real phenomenon but it's not something that like we we take our deen from it's something that we would act on like personally uh, or like that would strengthen things as long as it doesn't go against something that's established in the deen or that's uh, like established in like firm um, firm other types of evidence that it's very firm that this is something that's contrary to that and we, we, we push that um, down in that case but these things such as the law of attraction and these other things they're looking to tell you where you're getting your risk from like this is an act of, of finding action or like things of the unseen and a lot of these things they're actually looking into the unseen and trying to give you information about this and this is very very problematic and the people that get into this nonsense and maybe they will find results they're like oh i tried this and i got this thing came to me you know of course look at the kuffar the kuffar they pray to they pray to jesus or they pray to other people and then when their prayer gets answered they're like oh look i was right you know i was right in my belief is what is this how do the in the kuffar they pray to um to something other than allah and their prayer gets answered why is this this is a test allah has given them a test and they to see this person if he's gonna if he's gonna believe in other than me allah will answer his prayer even though it's he's doing shirk he'll answer his prayer as a, a fitna for him and so then when he gets um, stuck in that this is his own punishment his punishment for him asking for other than allah is that it gets answered and then he keeps going in this this is the punishment because if he dies in this sense he'll get punished even worse and of course this is this is a trial so of course like do why do other person people's prayer gets answered and is this a proof that they're on the truth that their prayer gets answered no it's not a proof allah allah can uh, uh, answer people's prayer or allah can give this person risk or allow the jinn to give this person risk of course nothing comes without allah's permission and this is what we believe as Muslims. But Allah can allow this other thing to happen and allow them to keep believing what they want to believe until He punishes them in the afterlife for, for, that, uh, for that shirk billah. And, and as Allah says, وَمَن يُشَاقِكِ الرَّسُولَ مِن بَعْنِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى And so whoever goes against, uh, goes against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after it has been made, made clear to him the, 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 the huda, like the guidance, uh, he goes against the path of the believers we, we let him love whatever he wants to love we, and this is something that Allah will give this person a love and a, a, an assurance upon this, and this misguidance because he'll let him do this and he will make him taste the hellfire uh, and so, and of course, this is wasa'at musira. Like this is a, a terrible um, abode or destination. And so, like this is something that, of course, we don't look to people's trial uh, trials in this case because this is all like if you want to put it up uh, uh, with a scientific, you want to go a scientific method, and you would take this um, law of attraction, you know, put this up in a scientific method. Does it work? No, it's not. No, there's no science uh, out there that will say this, this uh, law of attraction works. Do some people have results? Yes. And do some people have results when they pray to Buddha? Yes. And do some people have re results when they pray to different um, idols and whatnot? Yes. Do some people have results when they do, uh, when they do satanic uh, uh, witchcraft and all these other things? Yes, they have results. Does this prove that they're on the right truth? No. This is something that Allah does to test them. And so it's very important that people are, are very keen about whether they get their, um, their knowledge about the, the unseen and that they understand the knowing the future or perceiving the future or getting your, your sustenance in the future or looking for their sustenance from something other than Allah is this is an act, uh, this is an act of looking into the ghaib. And the ghaib is something that is only for uh, is only like this is not something for um, people to talk about without revelation without without uh, revelation or guidance and if they talk about this um, this ghaib without revelation then this is something like um, to tell us something about Allah or to tell something about like what Allah has created or where you're going to get your risk and to talk about this without any knowledge this is impermissible and this is the act of of the greatest acts of shirk and so this is very important that someone is it's clear when they look in uh, uh, or they have a clear mind and they see when some of these actions like trust in yourself no 
Put your, uh, put your faith in Allah and do all of the things that you need to do to get to that place. But put your faith in Allah. This is not, you don't trust in yourself. You, you're weak. You can't do anything. We say this how many times a day? We say, And this istiana, like this uh, trusting and this seeking help is only for Allah. Nastain, and so like this is only for Allah that we have that we put this um, faith and trust. So this is important that we worship Allah alone. And part of this work, uh, one of the greatest acts of worship is that du'a. And these people that go into the law of attraction, this is actually they're seeking. It's talab, like they're seeking uh, a response from the universe. Hey, you're speaking a response from the universe, or you're seeking a response from Allah. And this is that sh that shirk. And this, of course, is very, very dangerous. And someone should be very careful before they let this um, come into their life as a Muslim. Like this goes against the essence of, uh, of Islam. And so I, I, would really, I would really hope that people understand when they read things from the, from the kuffar that are guised as self-help or like positive philosophy and positive thinking and these things, that they're very keen. Take this back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And also, even better than that, leave the 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 nonsense that comes from these from these uh like the, some of these um, self-guidance mysticism like uh and like this uh, self uh, it's like self-misguidance you know and this this mysticism that takes people away from uh it takes them away from tawheed and it throws them down the path of the shaitan and of course uh we seek Allah's refuge from that and and, it, and the last thing i would i would want to say is like do your best to study the Quran, read the Quran, and seek your guidance from your life from the Quran, and you'll see that Allah will open up things and open up understanding for you in your life and speak to you in that, and also in the in the Sunnah, and like read books such as uh, Riyadh al-Salihin and Arba'in al nawawi Read these books constantly, and you'll see when you fill yourself with this, you'll see I have much better in the Quran, the Sunnah, than anything that any kufar can come up with with their mind. Of course, like, as I mentioned before, some of these health, self-help books, okay. Some of the self-help books are just about, like, time management. Okay, time management, great. You know, but actually, like, trying to get things from the universe and things that they're talking about unseen, this is something that is only for wahi to talk about. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.